you may have noticed that we're looking at lots of a big stack of, of photographs. And this is actually an image taken, or a, a few images taken from uh, Richard Dawkins's uh, new book. And I wonder actually if you might explain the thought experiment uh, behind this is, these images. Yes, this is from my latest book, which is uh, being published, I think, in three days' time, The Magic of, of Reality. And uh, what we're looking at here is a thought experiment in which the reader is invited to take a photograph of herself, an ordinary picture postcard, place it on a table, then take a photograph of her father, father's father, father's father's father, you can do it mother, whichever you like, uh, and then go on and go on and go on, stacking these photographs into an ever higher pile. And I arbitrarily decided that the pile should stop after um, 185 million generations. So we've got 185 picture postcards, photographs of your ancestors stacked on top of each other. That's about um, I, uh, 40, I think, I, I worked out New York skyscrapers. No, I think it's even more than that. Um, and um, then I imagine tilting it on its side. And so what you're seeing there is the stack of pictures tilted on its side. And you wander along this, uh, this great long bookshelf full of pictures, every now and again pulling one off. And the ones you see there are an, an archaic Homo sapiens and then a Homo erectus, um, which would have been our ancestor about a million and a half years ago. Um, <clears throat> What's interesting is that I asked the question, who was the first person? That's the title of the chapter. Every chapter in the book is, is a question, and every chapter in the book begins with a mythical, with a set of mythical answers, and then what? The true, the true answer, the scientific answer. So who really was the first person? And I begin with a slightly paradoxical answer that there never was a first person. Because every animal, every person ever born belonged to the same species as its parents. You can take that back as far as you like, and I take it back to 185 million generations ago. You turn over the page and you reveal that your 185 million greats grandfather was a fish. Do we have a uh, picture of a fish here? There, there might even, it might even be there. Um, and at first sight, it sounds paradoxical to say that your 185 million greats grandfather was a fish. But on the other, other hand, every single generation on the way back there belonged to the, there it is, yes, belonged to the same species as its, as its parents and as its, and as its children. The point is, of course, that the whole process is incredibly gradual, incredibly slow. Uh, it takes millions of years. We're familiar with this kind of gradual, imperceptible change because we all of us started off as a baby and became a toddler and became a child and became a teenager and became an adult. And there never was a moment when you could say, yesterday I was a, a toddler and now I'm a child, or yesterday I was a baby and now I'm a toddler. It doesn't happen that way. It's the same as looking at, your, at the hour hand of your watch. You can't see it move. But if you wait for an hour and look at it again, you find that it has moved. And that's like evolution. So um, it's a kind of fortunate accident that all the intermediates are extinct, which is why we can divide the living kingdoms into separate species which can't interbreed with each other. But if all the ancestors were still alive, then there would be a complete continuum between every creature and every other and every other creature, going back to the common ancestor and then forward again. And as you go back, every single generation, the, there never was a Homo erectus parent who gave birth to a Homo sapiens baby. Always they would be, have been classified, if a taxonomist had been around at the time, as belonging to the same species.